Hello, good morning and welcome. You're watching The Mining Show on Core Finance, brought to you by Blytheway, and I'm Charlie Gibson. Now, uh, as many of you may know, batteries have been important in mining for a very long time. And if you go to downtown Joburg, outside what used to be Gencor's headquarters, you will see an old stamp battery. And uh, these days, of course, um, that was an early form of comminution, as they say. These days, batteries, however, are a little bit more electronic, but they're no less important. In fact, they might be more important to all of us in a very short space, in a very few years' time. And uh, one of the companies that has seen the opportunity and is, in, uh, and is pursuing it um, is Sula Iron and Gold. In fact, they're pursuing it so much so that uh, you may ask what's in a name. I'll tell you what's in a name. They just changed their name to African Battery Metals. And joining me now is the Chief Executive Officer of that company, of Sula, oh, well, I should say, I would say Sula, but I should now say African ba Battery Metals, uh, Roger Murphy. Roger, very good morning. Charlie, pleasure again. Thank you very much indeed for joining so tell us what's in, in, in a name, because you, you've changed your name, African Battery Metals, and you know it, the clue is in the name, as they say. And uh, the key to this is that you have bought an exploration license in the DRC. A couple of licenses. I mean, we've, um, we've seen the opportunity in batteries for some time. Cobalt price is extremely tight. Everybody talking about increasing demand, uh, a lack of supply for cobalt. And we think we are in a, in, a, in a very strong position to capitalize on that. Through some of my partners in our technical advisor, Medini, uh, we have access to, uh, uh, one of them is a Congolese national and a metallurgist. And through him and my partners, we've uh, identified a number of what we think are extremely prospective cobalt licenses. We've secured those licenses. Uh, and you know, to reflect the change in the strategy of the company, we've renamed it from, as you say, solar iron and gold to African battery metals. And that's effective today. And tell us a little bit about these licenses. I'm assuming you, you say they're cobalt licenses. I'm assuming they're sort of copper cobalt. They're in the Lubumbashi area in Katanga. So they're in what, what is known as the, the Congolese copper belt. Exactly. And in the safest area of Congo. It's the area co close, to, uh, uh, close to Zambia where two thirds of the world's cobalt is mined. And as you rightly say, cobalt in Congo always comes with copper. So we will over time become copper and cobalt miners. Um, the licenses we've selected are within 30 kilometers of about seven or eight large mines owned by large companies, including Glencore and some other Chinese mines. So it's right in the fairway of high, high prospective. We're on the right kind of rocks. They're called the Rhone rocks. And uh, we start exploration uh, on the ground in the next week or so. So I've only ever been to one properly cobalt mine, and that was Macondo Mountain, which yeah. was an old Kamek mine. Um, is it in the vicinity no, of... No, I think uh, Macondo is a bit further away, but, you know, Ruashi Etoile, which used to be Metarex, which is now owned by the Chinese, is nearby, um, and several other larger mines. Um, Tikalushi, which used to be Anvil, the Australian company, is now uh, owned by another Chinese group. So, you know, that's one of the features as well as being concentration in ownership, you know, smaller companies starting mines and then progressive consolidation with the Chinese, uh, Glencore and other companies consolidating. So and, you know, we'd like to kind of explore that over time. But we're looking for cobalt in areas where we've already had independent geologists go in and given us, um, you know, uh, XRF uh, results of up to 2.5% cobalt, which is really high grade. So we're really excited about the opportunities. So I, that, that was almost my next question. I was going to say, is this actually a cobalt license or is this really a copper license which you're marketing as a cobalt license because it's got the usual copper but it's just a bit higher than normal in cobalt? It's probably that, that last point. It's higher grade cobalt than normal. The cobalt always comes with the copper but depending on the ratio of the two and the relative prices and of course cobalt prices have moved a lot further you know more I think doubled in the last 12 months relative to co copper so you know they would be more cobalt uh, more than 50% of the revenue when we ultimately put these things into production would be coming from cobalt. Over the last 15 months, I know cobalt is the best performing of, yeah. of 17 metals. And little factoid, if you wanted to, you could, you could price it in dollars per ounce at the moment. That's very interesting. So it, it, but, you, well, know, you could actually price yeah. it in two and a quarter dollars an ounce, which is not for that far away from where silver was about 20 years ago, say 25 years ago. I think the interesting thing relative to precious metals where we're coming from is that there are a lot of precious metals companies, but particularly in London, there are very few cobalt and uh, cobalt development and battery development companies. People are beginning to look at it now. Now, but if you look at uh, cobalt developers in Australia and in Canada, share prices have you know, up easily 100%, and we would love to kind of uh, join that group, but we've got a lot of work to do first. People 
typically think of when they think of batteries, they think of lithium. That's the first thing they yes. think of. But of course, it, it's not just lithium in the battery, is it? And, and, and what you're hoping to capitalize on, I think, is what they call the, well, the, there are a, a, a group of them, aren't there? But it's the sort of lithium, cobalt, nickel, possibly manganese oxide. That's right. Which, which go into the, um, the, the various electrodes of these, these new batteries yes. as they're being formulated. Well, I guess you know, the whole point is, you know, if you, if you buy a Tesla or a, a new, another electric vehicle, you want to kind of charge it up and then be able to drive to kind of Manchester or Birmingham or, or in my case, Cardiff, you know, without having to stop and recharge. And if you do have to recharge, you want like, you know, like a petrol engine, you want to recharge it quickly. And that's where one of the, one of the purposes of cobalt, it allows you to drive further and recharge quicker. Uh, and as you say, it's not just cobalt, you know, nickel is important, uh, as in prospectively as manganese. Uh, there's a lot of talk about vanadium, more for stationary applications, for huge batteries, you know, connected to wind farms or massive solar applications. So batteries are, you know, the big focus uh, of, uh, of electric, le electrification at the moment and alternative energy uh, and green energy, and we want to be part of that. And you've raised money, you raised money relatively yes. recently, and that, that, that was designed so you could buy the licenses? Well, not just to buy the licenses, we bought the licenses, but also um, to, to start exploration of the licenses. And we also bought back uh, the Riverfort um, uh, facility, which we put in place over the last few months. Um, they're very useful to us, and I thank Riverfort for their help at that time. But it was something that some of our new shareholders wanted to see done, and we've been very happy to do that. And so you're funded roughly until when now? In terms well, into of the, the later part of this year. You know, it, it depends it, on how aggressive we get in exploration and how, you know, how good the results we see. But we also see that there is a bit of a land grab going on you know, with other people after licenses that we've secured. And there were other bids for some of these licenses. So I think you know, we will look at whether there are, are, are other licenses, but you know, we wouldn't expect to be coming back to the market anytime soon. You mentioned Medini there as your technical par yeah. partners. Do they have the relevant... You, the DRC, for all the facts, you're in the in in the mining part in in the copper belt in the bit that is arguably yeah. most anglophile um do they have the relevant expertise for yeah. operating that well two things firstly I mean, before we go any further i just want to say put it on record that we will always operate at you know the highest ethical standards i know people are rightly concerned about child labor we'll have no truck with that you know we will be like you know the large operators like glencore and others completely ethical operators uh, and will you know use modern practice throughout but as to um, congo more generally and madini well you know madini is several partners of which i'm one all with 30 or 40 years experience and one of our partners is a congolese metallurgist who's run mines and built operations in congo and another partner has run mines there as well so you know we've got a lot of experience in the region we also our team is in Johannesburg, which is an hour and a half or two hours flight, so much easier to get into uh, uh, Lubumbashi than from London. Um, so, yeah, I think that is a real competitive advantage, particularly well, not just in de-risking existing assets, but in identifying other assets which could, you know, we could bring into, into the group over time. Worth mentioning, I mean, you mentioned child labor there, and when people mm. think of, of, of sort of child labor in mining in the DRC, yeah. what they typically think of actually is the sort of coal tan mining, which goes on w w with, um, uh, gallum, say, artisanal miners, yeah. usually up to their waists in water, sort of with jigs. And, and that actually, uh, and that is more of a problem for the coal tan industry, which is a lot, you know, a thousand miles further At north least or a something. Thousand miles. This is not what happens down in the, in the Copper Belt, where the mining is relatively modern yes, by, by, yeah. by world standards, but with proper little. companies doing growing Do, up. Yeah, large open pits, you know, like people would be used to seeing elsewhere in the world, not quite as large as the ones in South America, but nevertheless, large pits with trucks and dozers and lots of yellow metal, which is the sign of an efficient mine. And that's where we're heading. And there are, there are sort of recent stories that the DRC government might be now just clocking on, arguably somewhat belatedly, to, to what they perceive as being potential boom in the likes of Cobalt, and they're, they're thinking about raising taxes. Does, does the sort of the overall political environment deter you at all? I think it's, of course, you know, we have to be cognizant of this. As for the potential increase in the, in the royalty, I think Cobalt prices are so tight at the moment that the market would have to kind of uh, absorb it with Congo producing two-thirds of the world's Cobalt. So, you know, they are the price setters. Um, but as for, you know, uh, operating in Congo, as I say, we have, um, we have a Congolese partner who will be the head of our local operation. We're incorporating a company which, you know, so we'll do everything right by the rules uh, and operate um, 
you know, so, that, so to avoid these things. And just finally, when we last spoke, we were talking about your assets in mm. Sierra Leone and the recent exploration results and how you were going to take those forward. What does this mean for your Sierra Leone assets, your precious metal assets? Well, the gold assets in Sierra Leone, um, they're still core to the company. Uh, we will continue to explore and advance them. Uh, they are comp the, the geology is complex, uh, and I think they would benefit from you know, a, a greater level of technical and geological thinking on Archean greenstones than we, that we have internally. So we will be exploring, as we've signaled pre previously, a farm or a joint venture, you know, to bring those to account. But there's a lot of gold there. It's high grade, but it's structurally complex. All right, Roger. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was Roger Murphy, the Chief Executive Officer of uh, African Battery Metals, uh, erstwhile Silla Iron and Gold. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for, but uh, join us again next, next week when we'll be looking at other such uh, mining companies that give you other such opportunities. I'm afraid that's all from me, Charlie Gibson, uh, signing off here today for the mining show on Core Finance, brought to you by Blythe Way. And in the meantime, you have a very capital new year.